next speaker, Doug Perovich, uh, is engaged in a field that I have real trouble conceptualizing. So I'm only going to say one thing about it before I call him up here. Nano. Nano is a prefix that starts at one billionth. Nano means one billionth, and I guess a nanometer would be one billionth of a meter. This is the scale of objects that Doug works with. Could you come up here and help me out? I will do that. Thank you. I'm going to move all this because the professor never gets to sit down. You see, it's a uh it's a luxury here with these nice uh, couches. Okay. Thanks for that introduction, Moses. That's exactly what I want to do is I want to give you and the audience here uh, a, a perspective on, uh, on this world. So if, if Jack, if you can put the uh, first slide up. I'm going to give you a little slideshow of the world in which uh, I live. And it really starts where uh, we started this session this morning, where uh, Mark Garneau uh, has been closest to uh, of us in the audience. There's the surface of the moon. And the reason I use this is, is so that we can try and understand uh, this uh, scale of nano. The distance of this is uh, some 300,000 uh, kilometers from Earth. The space. Uh, it's interesting, when you walk into a bookstore and look in the science section, uh, and I've, I do this on occasion, and look at the distribution of the books uh, that one sees in there, a good third or sometimes half of them are associated with cosmology, uh, space, uh, the origins of the universe. Of course, we all are interested in that, our past, where we've come from. And then uh, the other large fraction are to do with uh, biology, biodiversity, uh, extinction, and uh, what, uh, what might be our fate. Well, there's, there's a whole uh, lot in between there that doesn't uh, see the light of day. And this, this is this uh, inner space that I, where I want to take you. So I have some uh, carefully selected examples to hope, uh, hopefully you can understand uh, what this world nano looks like. And so if we go to the next slide, uh, we'll start with this. Uh, this is not Arizona. Uh, you won't see the roadrunner and coyote here. Uh, this is the surface of copper. And there is a pointer here. These little rip ripples and things that you see here, these are actually atoms on the surface of, of uh, copper. So uh, for those that still think that we can't see atoms, I'm going to show you in the next uh, several images that. Uh, we've come a long way in the last uh, uh, 15 years. So we have a lot of steps here in this landscape, which is now on uh, the nanometer scale. So a billionth of a meter. If you like, uh, if we start at, uh, let's say this was a copper penny, it's the same scale as going from a copper penny to this surface as it is to go from that copper penny to the moon. The same scaling. Okay, not the same distance, but the same uh, scale. So we're shrinking down to a dimension where we, we can see such detail. I'm going to show you more of this. Uh, here's an image that uh, I took on an electron microscope, which uh, I'm going to have to uh, get you to visualize this. This is looking down into a cavity. So this is the uh, uh, inner surface uh, down here in the bottom, so it's concave. And here's the bottom of it. And, and so we're looking at a cavity with a series of steps. Uh, this happens to be, this is a, a crystal of uranium oxide uh, where we've uh, produced these, uh, these nanometer size uh, cavities. So this, if you like, is the smallest uh, amphitheater uh, that you've probably seen. These are little steps on which you could put uh, DNA molecules and, uh, and things of that sort. And again, to give you a sense for scale, you'd have to put about a million of these uh, that we put into the electron microscope next to one another to fill uh, a real uh, full-size amphitheater as we know it. Okay, so nanotechnology. Uh, I've been described as a nano-engineer in the, in the bio uh, for this meeting. 
what is this uh, nanotechnology, what, what the nanoengineers do? Uh, we design, we're architects, uh, in some cases artists, and we, we design structures on a scale uh, that uh, I'm showing you here where we manipulate atoms and molecules and put them into uh, certain configurations in which we get a behavior which is different, which is new, which is fundamentally different than what you would see with those same atoms in a larger size. So uh, taking atoms of, say, copper in that previous example, they will behave very differently in a very small nano-sized uh, assembly than copper in a bulk form as we're normally used to. So the, the excitement is, and I'm going to talk mostly about nano fact as opposed to nano fiction. I'll finish with that at the end which seems to be getting the attention of most people, uh, particularly in the media. But the nano fact is that we can produce very interesting and exciting new properties and behaviors in materials and systems and uh, components that give us uh, lots of exciting things to do. So this is a, a revolution, analogous to the Industrial Revolution, where we learned how to build machines and civil engineers built infrastructure in cities. We're doing exactly the same thing now at a billionth of the size. But we're, we're building structures and, and architecture um, uh, to perform certain functions. So if we go to the next slide, let me just give you a, a few uh, examples of how we, we take these images. Uh, not the last one, but the ones following this. This is not upside down. This is the tip of, uh, of an instrument known as a scanning tunneling microscope. This uh, won a Nobel Prize in 1986 in physics for two scientists at IBM in, uh, in Europe. And this, if you like, um, for this audience, I think uh, unlike the students I teach these days, you know what a phonograph is and a stylus uh, for playing records. This is a, an atomistic version of that where we make these tips. This happens to be diamond, uh, manufactured in a way where the tip of this uh, diamond pyramid in the best uh, version that one can manufacture is comes down to a single atom at that bottom tip. We then scan this over the surface of that copper that we saw earlier and the images that I'm going to show you next. And uh, we, we sense the fields, the forces of the atoms, and we then form pictures from that. So uh, the next few pictures uh, come from uh, one of Nano's uh, most uh, decorated scientist, Don Eigler, who's at the IBM labs in San Jose. And he's a member of our program here in Canada, the uh, Canada Canadian Institute for Advanced Research. Last year you had uh, our president, uh, Haviva Hosek, uh, here on the stage. And uh, this is a, a uniquely Canadian um, uh, uh, invention where we form a network of some of the greatest people in this country and, and affiliate them with uh, people around the world and uh, create a, a learning atmosphere that I like to describe as a university without walls, which brings together very different thinking in one room and uh, we move forward on that basis. So the next few images are from Don Eigler. So if we can uh, go on to the next one. Uh, this uh, nice looking image is um, the surface of something most of you probably have in your pocket. This is nickel. Uh, the surface of nickel, and this is not the roughness of the embossing of the, uh, uh, of the uh, features on that surface. The, the bumps and things that you would feel on this scale would be the size of Mount Everest. This is the atoms uh, arranged. They like to arrange themselves in very uh, specific uh, organizational patterns, and these are the atoms on the surface of nickel. For those that like to think in magnifications, the magnification of this image on the screen here is one billion times. Okay, let's go to the next one, Jack, thanks. Now here is uh, one of Don Eigler's most famous uh, images. He calls this the uh, quantum corral or stadium, where he's put down uh, on the surface here of, um, the, the, the rippled surface is uh, copper, and these little spikes that form this corral are iron atoms. And so these are now, uh, this is now one of the sort of uh, best examples of manipulation at the finest scale where you can pick these atoms up and form uh, structures as uh, one would like. So there's a, uh, there's a reason to make this elliptical structure where 
As you know, uh, in an elliptical structure, we have these two focal points. We see uh, atoms at that point, and he's demonstrated that one can communicate from uh, one of those points to the other point um, information without actually having uh, any, uh, anything moving. So it's, uh, it's a new form of uh, uh, information uh, transfer. If we go to the next one, uh, just to show you that that's not uh, something that's, uh, that's sort of uh, image uh, processing and mumbo jumbo, here's an example of uh, making one of these sorts of corrals, a circular one, where they sort of sprinkle down these atoms on the surface and then you don't see it happening here uh, uh, in the images, but you they pick these up one by one and form uh, these very perfect structures. Next one, John. Here's uh, kanji. Uh, can anyone read what this uh, is? It means Adam, that's right. The original, I think the literal translation is original child, if, if I'm not mistaken. So these are atoms of, um, of uh, uh, I believe, copper on uh, a platinum surface. And the next one? Here's the uh, world's smallest man, <laughs> made of carbon monoxide. These little spheres, the purple dots, are carbon monoxide molecules, that nasty stuff that uh, we all hear about in a different context. Here uh, we can uh, assemble that into, uh, into the shape. So the, the control now at this level allows us to do uh, uh, patterning and information um, uh, uh, storage at a, at a previously unimaginable uh, uh, rate. Next one, please. Here's a, a nano uh, Fender Stratocaster. Now this is about the size of a red blood cell. Uh, 20 of these stacked next to one another would make up a human hair, just to give you uh, a feel for this size. And those strings, which are only about 100 atoms wide, if you plucked this, if you played this, you wouldn't hear anything. You would have ultrasound, all right? which we, you know we use for other uh, purposes. So you would get a very different uh, uh, behavior, as I said, from uh, something of a very different size. Next, uh, Jack. Okay, um, let, me, let me turn to some of the, uh, the technology and, and, and the excitement that uh, we can look forward to and to uh, hopefully uh, come up with some solutions to the many problems that uh, we fear and the things we've been hearing about, some of them in, the, uh, in this conference. This is uh, one of the, the two new exciting forms of, of, uh, of um, materials. It's a new form of carbon. Uh, we, had, we had, and we, we thought we only had two forms of carbon previously, that is graphite in uh, your pencils and diamond, um, which is in a very different form and, uh, and gives us very different properties. This is a carbon nanotube, which was found basically by accident, and we get these, uh, these tubular-like arrangements. This one's flattened a bit uh, of the carbon atoms, and as we see this uh, spiral. So these have, have been shown uh, in recent last few years to have tremendous and very exciting mechanical and electrical and uh, properties. We can fill these things with various uh, uh, molecules and then uh, achieve uh, a number of very exciting uh, results. If we go to the next one, uh, the other, um, this is distorted a bit, the, the other thing you'll, you'll, you'll probably see more and more is something called a quantum dot, uh, which is a spherical version, if you like, of, uh, of the nanotube as I've shown you, where we can assemble these things and uh, we attach then an appropriate type of um, of, uh, of a species, of a molecule on the outer surface, and then use these carbon, uh, these ones are called buckyballs, after Buckminster fullerene, and these are just uh, geodesic spheres, like the Ontario Place sinosphere or a soccer ball, the world's smallest soccer balls are these 60 atom carbon rings, onto which we can attach many things and, and then use these as vehicles to deploy them and uh, perform various functions. So in the next slide, uh, here are some examples of uh, of uh, where we can do things in health. The ex very exciting uh, work that we've heard of uh, re just uh, previous to me, prior to me by Yosef. I mean, to be able to target site specifically and put uh, these drugs uh, where we need them as opposed to uh, having them uh, travel through the whole body and potentially cause side effects is where nanotechnology converges with the biomedical side of um, of research, so we can send in these clusters, which is shown up here in the top right, and uh, send them into uh, a, a tumor site and attach a certain antibody that will recognize those tumor cells, and then if necessary, uh, use uh, ultraviolet or laser, safe laser uh, 
uh, illumination through the skin to excite uh, a reaction where we then attach the uh, antibodies and we, we kill that um, tumor in its place and there goes chemotherapy and ravaging the body as we do it now. Uh, this is not science fiction, this is a few years away. So. Uh, very exciting for us to do. And, and I could go on and on about the, uh, the developments in growing tissue and skin and, and making the artificial heart. These are all things that are going on. And implants of various kinds, uh, this, is, uh, this is coming and, uh, in, uh, in our generation. Uh, let's go to the next one, Jack. Um, we've heard a little bit about DNA. Well, again, this is where we have a convergence uh, between, uh, another example of convergence between biology and, uh, and the sciences, uh, you don't have to read any of this, but we can, we can put DNA strands down onto a, basically on a computer chip surface, this is silicon, and then use those DNA molecules which contain, uh, of course, as you know, a very much complex information, that's uh, what uh, defines us, and you then send down different types of DNA molecules containing different information, uh, which then, can bind with some of these single strands to make double strands. And what's shown here in this sequence of images is we can use uh, certain uh, treatments to eliminate uh, the, the strands that don't bind into double uh, strands. And ultimately, this is a way of, uh, of doing uh, information processing. Our computer chips of the future will likely be uh, living. The best computer we have is uh, within our heads. And uh, the computers that we uh, gloat about now and these exciting machines we see around the building uh, don't even come close to what uh, the brain can do. And so here is where we're trying to um, marry these, um, these different technologies. Uh, let's go to the next one. Uh, I'm going to finish with um, where I think the, uh, the future really lies. These are sketches from uh, 1872 by uh, Professor uh, Peter... Um, uh, I forgot his surname, I'm sorry. Uh, he, uh, he was looking at uh, simple structures, Peter Harding, that, that's his name, very simple structures of, uh, of, of uh, skeletal um, uh, biological forms, and he came up with all these sketches long before we, had, we knew what an atom was and that we knew about electrons and that uh, we had biochemistry. So if, if we go to the next uh, slide, uh, here are, uh, here's what nature does. These are uh, glass houses, okay? Single cells. Uh, single cells make these, um, these houses by taking the minerals from, be it seawater, and constructing, and knowing how to construct uh, an environment in which they live. These are made of glass. This is silica, silicon oxide, so this is really, really is glass. But look, look at these uh, complex forms that are nano in scale. We haven't uh, been able to come close to be able to manufacture this with all we know in science and engineering, and only recently have we made some uh, advances in this. So if you just sort of look at some of these um, uh, diatoms and radiolaria, as they're called, and you sort of freeze a couple of those in your mind, if you look at the next picture, this comes from uh, a, a colleague and a good friend of mine at the University of Toronto named Jeff Ozen in the chemistry department, who uh, just in the last few years have learned how to uh, coax atoms to assemble themselves into the sorts of structures that nature has been doing for, learn how to, has learned how to do in the last 3.8 billion years. So now we're moving into an area where we're, we don't need necessarily need to use that brute force approach of picking atoms up one by one. I didn't show you the equipment that's necessary to do those experiments. It would fill a room. It looks like a mini space station. It costs millions of dollars. It takes a lot of time. This is the future. Let's do it uh, the way nature has been doing it, and nature can teach us a lot. So we're converging physics, chemistry, and biology, and as is mentioned in the, uh, uh, in the bi biography, uh, in the bio for me, uh, at the University of Toronto, we formed the first undergraduate program anywhere uh, on the planet in which we converge uh, all of the sciences as we know it, because you know, 50 years from now, we will look back at this time and wonder why we split things up into physics, chemistry, and biology, because at the nanoscale, they really aren't different. Um, so these, uh, this uh, group of students, uh, we just have the first uh, uh, group going through uh, start, who started last year, are so excited because they, they're learning in depth um, the biology, the chemistry, 
the physics so that they can work at the interfaces between uh, the sciences as we've developed them thus far, and that's where the excitement is. So here's, uh, here's our sort of first attempts, and uh, it looks pretty good, that we can do self-assembly and uh, learn how to do this uh, as nature has done, and hopefully uh, much faster uh, than uh, it's taken these uh, single cells and so on to do in, in over billions of years. Uh, I think that's it, if, if you go one more. Yeah. I thought I would, uh, I'm, I'm probably close to, uh, I don't see any red dots there, Jack. How much time am I? About a minute. About a minute, okay. I thought I would just demonstrate, um, as uh, we heard from our previous speaker, we'll come to our labs and so on, but uh, most of you won't uh, take the time to do that. So I, I don't know if our great cameraman can, can zoom in and see this, but I'm gonna, I brought a sort of example of, uh, of teaching a material. This is a smart material, it's a simple wire. Uh, in this form, um, which has been trained. Uh, the, the atoms have been trained to uh, know uh, something about temperature. So I'm gonna heat this up using this lighter. Uh, maybe you can, uh, yes, I'll, I'll hold it still there. And uh, let's see what happens to this. Ah. There we go. Oh, Canada. <laughs> Moses, I know we weren't supposed to prepare for this, but I was thinking, what, what could I design to bring here? Uh, uh, something that really inspired me. And, and I must admit, the first time I had seen um, uh, a woman naked, a brassiere removed, was uh, in the baby blue movies back in the early 70s. <laughs> <laughs> the problem is I couldn't really get to watch it because my parents uh, kept uh, chasing me out of the room. And then you introduce baby blue movies too, just recently, and I still can't watch it because my kids stay up late on weekends. <laughs> so here's, uh, here's what I uh, put together uh, for, uh, for us to consider. There are underwires in this brassiere which are made from a similar sort of alloy of just what I've shown you, that, uh, <laughs> but this is not gonna make your breast look like the maple leaf. What I've tried to do is to create a material that uh, will sense temperature change so that uh, when excited, we can see a change in the cleavage. <laughs> <laughs> and it, it now gives men an opportunity to see a noticeable change in excitement, uh, which women have had uh, for uh, so <laughs> at their disposal since the beginning of time. So uh, I know I'm out of time, but uh, it would be nice to have a volunteer come up and try this. <laughs> come on, Moses, can you do something for me? Well, Doug, I, I, on another occasion, will regale okay. you with the story of I just the want to first finish. time I ran across one of those things. The underwires, I mean. Yeah. I, I didn't know you could have anything that stiff there, and I panicked. <laughs> yeah. I want to ask you one question on your way out. I know this is breaking my own rule, but who made that little guitar, the two micron guitar, That was how? That was manufactured at uh, Cornell, at their nanotechnology um, uh, center. And that's made uh, through the, what I call the brute force top-down approach to chiseling out a material, I believe that's silicon, uh, as we do to make the devices that are in all our electronics and computers. So it's, it's chiseling out with finer and finer um, uh, capability, uh, a structure uh, like that. So it's, a, it's, it's fantastic. fantastic. I, just, I just wanted to say one more thing uh, to finish off. Uh, a message. Um, We've heard uh, over the last day uh, and, and this morning uh, that there's, there's a lot of doom uh, that's facing us. You know, science, uh, science has the solutions, uh, and, and the message I want to leave is, is give us a chance. And I, I, I'm sort of sending this message out to everybody, to the, to the journalists who write. Don't, you know, don't spend so much time on the nanofiction, the, you know, the cryonics and, and freezing our bodies and, and, and preserving them. And, and the nanorobots that will ravage and self-replicate and destroy uh, the world, that's all bullshit, that, that's, that's not true. 
uh, give us a chance to to uh, educate the people out there. So uh, let's let, let's see some more writing on this. I mean, every newspaper, a good newspaper, has an art section. Why isn't there not a science section every day? And the filmmakers, uh, you know, science is always used for such bad things. I mean, even in the new uh, Spider-Man uh, blockbuster movie, I mean, they moved from the original story where Spider-Man was bit by a radioactive spider to now it's a nanotechnological gene uh, 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 modification uh, story. Uh, let's write about the good things, uh, and let's see movies about successes uh, in what we can do. So, uh, And that's what the public will ultimately hear from us, and so have faith and uh, we, will, uh, we will solve some of these problems. So thank you. Thank you.